We are welcomed here today with Dr. Summit Mukherjee and Dr. Devine. Dr. Mukherjee comes to our specialty clinic here in Harlan um, several times a month, and he is the pulmonary and critical care physician, as well as medical director of the intensive care unit, as well as the thoracic clinic at Jenny Edmondson. Um, Dr. Devine is our internal medicine physician and pediatrician here in Harlan. Welcome, both of you. Thank you for joining us today. And we're going to just talk a little bit about the pandemic and COVID-19. Um, can either of you just speak to me a little bit about the current state of the pandemic? Maybe Dr. Mukherjee, if you'd like to begin. Sure, I'll start. Well, thanks for having us. And I think it's an important talk topic to talk about because as much as we are all tired of talking about COVID, uh, this is something that is controlling our lives at this point almost every hour of the day. And so certainly we don't have a choice to talk about this. It's just something that's, uh, that's present right now and, and we, we, need to, um, we need to take it a step at a time as it comes to us. And so right now what we're dealing with is that the numbers are bad. Um, hospitalizations are up, patients aren't getting beds, uh, and that uh, people are awfully sick from, uh, from COVID. And of course, now we have um, rapid spread in the community with the, uh, with the milder variant as well, Omicron. And, and so we are seeing the evolution of this process during the pandemic. And, uh, and so, you know, there's a lot of uh, confusion. There's a lot of uh, hesitancy. There's a lot of uh, discussion about what's right and what's wrong amongst um, the information that's out there. And so uh, it's hard to know as this, back, as this pandemic uh, evolves through time what, what, um, we're, what we're dealing with on a weekly basis. But we, uh, we know based on the numbers at this point in the community that the prevalence is very high, the incidence is very high, and the, uh, the mortality is very high at this point in our hospitals. I'm gonna to add to that. So it's really important for us as a rural community because if we have one bed in his ICU that is occupied by for a month by somebody with COVID that keeps people that might have a heart attack or a stroke or other people from obtaining that bed. So it has really led to a situation where we're having a hard time finding beds for people um, both in the city and in rural communities. Thank you, Dr. Devine. That kind of addresses the next question, which is what you were seeing regionally regarding COVID-19 and the bed capacity, and then what we're seeing here rurally. And so what you're saying is that in both locations, we're, we're having some bed capacity in Omaha as well as here in Harlan. So the question was about bed capacity. It's a combination of things. Not only are COVID patients occupying beds for longer, but it's also affecting our staff. So then we have staffing shortages and then there's less beds available that are staffed to be able to take care of the patients that do come in. So it's a combination problem. Absolutely. And really in Southwest Iowa and uh, Nebraska, we are dealing with um, bedding, um, bedding placement and, and transfer issues that we've never ever dealt with as, uh, as a community. So we're trying to uh, work with our transportation services, critical access hospitals to get patients where they need to go. Um, quite honestly, that's not happening. It's not happening well enough because uh, we just don't have the beds to be able to uh, get the patients in who really need um, uh, some, uh, some advanced um, intervention at only particular centers. Uh, and and that, uh, that's been a challenge for, um, for all of us. Uh, you know, there, every hospital has their certain expertise and their certain providers that can um, provide services. And that's been a challenge for all of us because we all work together as a community uh, to provide patient care. And that's just been very difficult. The good thing that's come out of that part is that there's been a lot more open communication. So we can call our partners that are intensivists and get assistance like with managing ventilators from a distance. So we have been able to provide good care and we have been able to get some expertise, but it's been more from a distance. Very good. 
Um, can either of you speak to, to us just regarding what we're learning more about the Omicron variant and are we still seeing the Delta in our area and tell us a little bit more about that? Sure, I can speak to what I'm seeing uh, primarily in the hospital, those younger folks, uh, typically unvaccinated, who end up uh, very sick in the intensive care unit. Those folks, I think, based on what we're seeing, are more of the Delta variant um, at this point. Omicron is certainly spreading very rapidly um, in the community as well. Typically, we see milder disease with the Omicron variant. Um, you know, as this process evolves, from an infectious disease standpoint, these variants will continue to, to happen. And sometimes that's not, a, that's a natural course. That's not necessarily a, a terrible thing where, uh, where something is more infectious because it may be less virulent. It may cause less severity of disease. And so what we're seeing in the community at this point is that it's milder disease, which is promising, however, with the rapid spread and still the percentage of folks that we have unvaccinated, it could potentially be very dangerous. From what I've read, we're going from about a 3% mortality to an under 1% mortality. The problem is when you have less people that are protected because it is something new and something that may not be recognized as well, then you have that 1% is still a lot of people. And so there's still a lot of people that can be affected. Absolutely. And then what are your recommendations regarding the vaccination and um, what would you like to speak to people about? What I will say about vaccinations um, is generally what I'm seeing. And what I will do is put all of the, uh, uh, all of the information and all of the news, uh, the hype and all the politics aside about vaccination. And I will just tell you what I am seeing in our walls in the hospitals that I uh, provide services in. 95% or more of patients that I'm seeing are unvaccinated. And, uh, and so when it gets to the point um, that patients are critically ill and they come to me and I'm managing them on the ventilator or I'm, uh, I'm managing advanced respiratory support, that one of the biggest predictors of how you will do is your vaccination. I know there's a lot of discussion uh, about, well, what about um, you know, natural immunity and, and all of those things. I think that those things play a role, certainly. Natural immunity plays a role. However, we do not know what level of illness will then translate to what level of natural immunity and immune response. And we also don't know what protective ability you will have in the long run because of that immunity that you get. And so we are going to have variants that come in, and this is going to be an ongoing process for some time. Your best shot at this point is to be vaccinated. And the more people that are vaccinated, the less we will see that are as sick and require those specialized services. There has been reports of the illness following being vaccinated. So can you tell us a little bit more about that, the breakthroughs and um, why you still encourage the vaccination? Sure, I can address that a little bit and I'm sure you'll elaborate on it too. The um, vaccination, again, is helping you identify the enemy. It doesn't keep them from coming in. So even people who are vaccinated when they're exposed are likely to have some invasion of the virus into their system. However, they may not even notice because they may feel well and not have enough. Their response has been so nice and brisk that they may not even know. The problem with that is those people can still transmit it. So we still have to take the other precautions like social distancing and wearing masks and washing our hands and being cognizant of those people around us who might not be able to mount a response, like those with an immune compromised system or on chemotherapy or on prednisone or other things that can compromise their immune system. So I do think that that plays a big role in our other things we do, as well as the vaccination, that yes, even though you're vaccinated, you can have a low grade infection without even knowing it and transmit it. Absolutely. 
And, you know, just to elaborate, um, you know, the breakthrough cases that we are seeing, again, I'll speak to what I'm seeing with my own eyes, because I know that sometimes uh, people are looking for some, some solid, valid information that they can turn to. And what I see every day on a daily basis are very few severe cases of disease in those who are vaccinated. I do see people who are vaccinated who get sick. And that, just like Dr. Devine was saying, it doesn't guarantee you that you're, that, you're, that you're not going to get COVID. It doesn't guarantee that. You will still be at risk for getting COVID. The um, identification from your immune system, as Dr. Devine said, when you are vaccinated and the ability to mount a response that's appropriate um, is what's going to help you stay healthy. And, um, and boy, some people still have very, um, they, they don't feel well. They get sick, they don't feel well. But we are talking about the difference between feeling well, not feeling well versus survival and preventing yourself from being on a ventilator. Those types of things are certainly quite, uh, quite different. And so, and, and then in addition, as Dr. Devine had mentioned, the transmittability, the, the ability for you to spread the virus at that point as well um, is decreased. So uh, both things to keep in mind. So yes, we are seeing some uh, some breakthroughs and, and people who get uh, COVID who are vaccinated. I think that that's something that is going to continue. You still have the chance of getting COVID. It's, it's, that is not what this is about so much as it is, A, preventing the spread of this and putting an end to this, uh, these, these surges, and, uh, and, and B, not having severe complications from your illness. And Dr. Devine, being the pediatrician, what is your recommendation for the vaccination for children? If you are able to get it, get it. And again, it's not just to protect yourself, but we are seeing more pediatric infections. The pediatric ICUs are now filling up. Um, the last I saw was 85%. So we are seeing more infections um, and more complications. However, it also helps protect the other people in that family, in that unit, in that community. So it is important for people who can spread it to go ahead and get vaccinated. Also an important point with that, I'm sure Dr. Devine mentioned that 85% and uh, knowing the numbers just generally of those people who are hospitalized in the ICU out of the pediatric population, we're still talking about unvaccinated folks. Yeah. And what can our community do just to minimize the spread? So these are the basics. So if you think about how far germs spread, if you're breathing on a cold day, you'll spread particles probably about yay far. If you cough, you could spread it across a room. So making sure that if you are sick, you stay home. That's number one. Number two would be to mask when you're in groups and in public. Um, and again, it's not necessarily for your protection. It can be for the protection of the people around you. Absolutely. I, I completely agree with all of those things. And uh, I think what I would add to that is mostly um, just the element of humanity. You know, we're, we're all going through this uh, together as a society and globally. Um, we're in it together. We need to, um, it, the, it's been a difficult journey. There's obviously a lot of uh, factors that play into this pandemic um, from cultural standpoint and political standpoint within the United States, we definitely need to join together and, and fight this because we don't wanna be living like this for forever. And, uh, and so I think that the more we can work together, the more you can um, be uh, compassionate and understanding. And that goes for, uh, for everybody on, uh, on each side of this, I think it is to, to work together and try to um, to move forward so that we can keep people healthy and, and get through this. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Devine and Dr. Mukherjee. We appreciate the information to our community and appreciate your dedication and time that you are committing to COVID-19 patients and, and all of us. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Appreciate it. Thanks for having us.